now we do it in the name of Jesus. Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Saints, we want to say we love you so much and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Lord, I thank you for allowing the people to be able to receive the things that you have to say on today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for purifying our hearts, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for having your divine way on today. Lord, I thank you for saying the things you desire to say through me, Lord God. Lord, I decrease as you increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that things are as well as they are, Lord. We continue to praise your mighty name, Jesus. For you sit high and you look low, Lord. And you have all things in your divine hands. And for that, Lord, we give your name the praises and the honor and the glory. Hallelujah. But you are the God that was, that is, and that is to come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are internally grateful to you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Saints, there is something interesting, of course, that the Lord has given me. Amen. And I am honored and excited to share it with you. Amen. Um, yeah, we're going to get into the book. Amen. Let's walk on water. Hallelujah. Uh, I tell you, the Lord is so amazing. Amen. He is he is so amazing, amen, so wonderful, so terrific, amen. He's just so mighty, and uh, I'm just excited, amen, I'm excited. Um, revelation the Lord gave me, amen, on a couple of things. Um, I know that things that the Lord do for us, to us, and through us is not just for nothing, amen. How many knows? That is not just for nothing. Amen. He's doing these things with a purpose in mind. Amen. With purpose in mind. And, um, yeah, I am eternally grateful for that. I don't know if you follow us on YouTube or not. But I um, posted a um, reading of the book of Esther. Amen. The book of Esther, if you haven't checked it out, check check that out, amen, if you will, if you have time. It's one of those reads where you don't have to just uh, uh, stare at the screen, right? You can just turn it on and continue doing the things that you're doing as long as you're listening, amen. Sometimes so many things could be going on, but how many know our subconscious, our subconscious mind, is still listening, amen, is still recording. And uh, we read the book of Esther, and it was a great read. It's always a great read, amen. We read the book of Esther, and I tell you what, I really, we really enjoy the book of Esther, amen. And the Lord had his divine way, amen, with the reading of it. And I thought, okay, Lord, this is great. I have even went back and listened. I listened to it and listened to it and listened to it. Amen. And, yeah, it's it's just awesome to uh, fulfill that doubt or or thinking that, thinking bad thoughts, you know, or thinking, you know, just whatever it is, the word is always a good um, placement to combat 
such things, amen, to combat uh, the voice of the enemy, the workings of the enemy is always good uh, to combat, amen. And I was listening to the book of Esther, and I'm like, Lord, you know, at first, the Lord put the book on my heart to do it. And so I was like, okay, Lord, let's go. So we did it. And um, after then, I thought, okay, well, I guess this is what just what the Lord wanted to do, which was to for us to uh, to read that, amen, and uh, to bring it to life, bring it off the pages, and come to find out the Lord wanted more from that, amen. He wanted more from that. And as I continue to go, I believe we did that maybe two days ago. And as I continue to go on, amen, through the course of the days, um, the Lord just kept bringing things from Esther back. He kept bringing things from the book of Esther back to me. And like uh, even reading it um, out loud for you that time, the Lord led me to even the Lord gave me more revelation in this book of Esther. Amen. And in hearing certain things and in showing me the, the, the certain ways that the people felt in Mordecai, Esther, and, you know, the Jews uh, and their perspective places and of uh, the king, even Haman, his wife, his friends, you know, his house, uh, different ones in the book of Esther, how each one of them had to have been and the bible shows us okay how uh they were their attitudes their mindsets okay their disposition even amen and so the bible shows us uh, how they were but uh, in reading and then then going and studying and then going and listening the lord began to to um highlight different other things to me amen and those different other things I'm going to share with you all today. Um, one of those things is, of course, we know uh, the purification process. All right. The purification process. Um, the purification process for the virgins, okay, were uh, bathing in oils and going through um, these different uh, monthly things to purify them for a natural king amen that purification process but the lord has been showing me that we have been going through a spiritual purification process amen we've been going through a spiritual purification process amen and i'm going to show you how that looks i'm going to give you the examples the lord gave me amen in prayer and uh, we're going to uh, dig in this thing, amen. We're going to dig in this thing. One of the ways uh, that the Lord is purifying those that he has chosen, amen, is to wash off the filthiness of the flesh, okay? Now, these teachings, they don't, they don't rock with everyone. These teachings don't fit everyone because everyone is not trying to pro to proceed on everybody's not trying to continue on in the faith some are excited and happy where they are thinking hey we have arrived but then there are others of us we know that this is a journey that we're on amen and so one number one is washing off the filthiness of the flesh amen and what i gather is uh not trying just because i'm into a thing Amen. I'm not trying to make that thing right, right? Just because I'm into a thing, I'm trying to make it right and trying to preach it right and trying to teach it right just because I like to do it. You know what I'm saying? Or just because I'm into doing it, you know, uh, I preach it, teach it, declare it right. And to declare it right and it's not biblical, it becomes a self-right which is a self-righteousness that the Bible speaks of. Amen. And so that is one of the things that the purification process strips us from. It strips us from a self-rightness. 
self-rightness. It strips us from self-righteousness. I'm talking about the purification process because what the Lord has showed me is that there are many, 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 many that call themselves that have come out. He showed me that there were many virgins in the land, all right? Many virgins in the land that were called in, all right? They were called in, and many of them came. So many virgins were called in. Many of those virgins came, okay? So we're not denying that many have been called in, and we're not denying that many have came, all right? Many have came, but what makes the difference between the chosen, amen, and those that just came is when we look back at the children of Israel, all right? The children of Israel, the Lord delivered them from the bondage of Egypt, being in captivity, uh, believing the way they believe, and worshiping how they worship, and doing slave tasks, right? having taskmasters where the Lord delivered them out of that bondage. Okay. But just because those people came out, all right, just because those people came out and all of them came out at the same time, it does not mean, it does not mean that all of them really came out. Amen. Their bodies came out. But many of their mentalities were the same. Do you hear me? Their bodies came out in the, in the place that they were changed. They were no longer in Egypt, all right? And you and I are no longer in the club, okay? We are no longer uh, in, at the crack house. We are no longer, okay, selling out, prostituting our bodies. We are no longer doing these things. And it appears we've come out of that place and into what? I'm in this holy place. I'm in, uh, guess what we call the church today. I'm in, you know, this holy place. And I am among those that are holy. Many have come out of a place. But a lot of times the place does not come out of us, right? So this was the reason for the purification process. Many of the virgins in the land came out of the houses they were in. They came out of the way they knew things. They came out and they went into a new place, another place. But in this other place, many, all of them, but one, kept the same mindset they had. Being... Many of them thought they knew, I know how to please the king, and I know how to do this, and I know how to do that. And many of them, just because they came out and into this place, it doesn't mean, even though they were naturally going through a purification process, and we naturally attend services, we naturally do this, and we naturally do that, but it doesn't mean that spiritually... We have went through the purification process. It doesn't mean that. All right. So we see all these virgins, but only one is lowly enough and meek enough to ask help from someone that knew the king to say, what is it that you think I should wear? All right. And she began to get this advice. From those who knew the king. Those who knew the king. Those who had fellowship with the king. So there was one that that wanted the advice. And then the others, you know, they were just fine coming out of one place into another place. And they had it, right? They had it. All I need is the door open. I got the rest. And a lot of times we feel this way, right? All I need you to do, Lord, is open the door and I can handle the rest. And this is where we mess up big time, saints. We mess up big time thinking that we just need God to open the door and we got the rest. It's not the case. We've seen time and time and time again that that is not the case. Amen. That's not the case. So the purification process 
is to wash off the filthiness of the flesh. All right. Number two is to be cleansed of the way we see things. Those virgins, they were they were in a new place. Yes, close to royalty. They were given anything they wanted or needed. But the way they saw things did not change. And because the way they saw things did not change, they were not picked. Amen. Because the way they saw things did not change, they were not picked. Amen. Um, number three, being able to hear wisdom and apply. Esther was able to hear wisdom and apply it. She didn't just hear wisdom and then just go on in her own way. No, she was able to hear wisdom and apply it. And even though she went, even though she went in the door, just like the other versions went in the door, she had something about her where she could hear that wisdom and apply it to allow her to cause a concreteness in this place right sometimes we can arrive to a place but there is no concreteness in that place because we don't have the we don't have anything inside of us to be able to receive wisdom to be able to receive wisdom we don't have it sometimes amen and so it causes that place not to be concrete it causes that place to be i was once in this place but now i'm not you know what I'm saying? I was once in that place, but now I'm not. Amen. It causes, uh, it causes a shortness. It's short lived. It was short lived. Why? Because most of the times we thought it was in our own confidence. We thought it was in our own strength. We thought we had enough wisdom. We thought we were taught enough. We thought we had enough. We thought that. <laughs> but the way God set it up, is you will never, ever have enough without me, ever. Yeah. It's the preceding word. And a lot of times we don't want or desire that preceding word. Why? Because we are confident that we have enough. We're confident that we have enough. So number three in the purification process is and we talked about the purification process before we did a whole segment on the purification process this is the lord continuing number three being able to hear wisdom and apply it being able to hear wisdom and, uh, esther did not look at the the man helping her and say well, I'm the future queen. I just feel it in my heart. And because you are, you're helping me, you're already beneath me. She could have had an attitude that this man was beneath her, right? And if she would have had that attitude, do you think he would have given her the, the best place in the house? Do you think that she would have gotten the inside scoop? Do you think that they would have been pushing for her and telling her, what to put on, what to do, how to do. Do you think they would have gave her the inside scoop if she thought she was better at any time? Right? So we have a lot to look at, saints. We have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn. Number four, being okay with being peculiar. A lot of us are not okay with being peculiar. A lot of us are not okay with being set apart. A lot of us are not okay with being set aside for the master's use. A lot of us are just not okay with being peculiar. We're not okay with being different. We, we want to fit in so bad. So bad. So bad. Right? And... It's a recipe for disaster. It is. 
the purification of the spirit, the Lord is going to test us, try us, prove us to see. Do you have what it takes? Are you willing to go through? They that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. So the oils are good. The myrrh is good. Frankincense is good. All that's good. But are you willing to undergo a spiritual purification process? And many of us, we're not. But there are some. Number five. Having our brain washed. You ever heard anybody say that man is brainwashed, a woman's brainwashed? Well, in order to be a part of the kingdom, we have to have our brain washed. Amen. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. We have to have that brain washing. Amen. Because if we don't have that brain washing, we will mess it up every time. Amen. We will mess things up every time. We will mess it up. The brain wash. So these are some of the things that the Lord gave me for a purification process. And during this, he showed me so many. They have come out. Yes, they've come out and they've become Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. They've come out and they are Christians now. They come out and they are Baptists now. They come out and they are Pentecostal. They come out and they're this and they come out and they're that and they come out and they're this and they come out and they're that. But it does not mean because they physically came out that they spiritually came out. Because I am not using all these folks. There is a certain virgin that I'm looking for. You hear me? There is a certain virgin that I'm looking for. There are so many of the Israelites and this and that. And they say, we don't do Easter and we don't do Valentine's Day. We don't do Christmas and we don't do uh, the 4th of July. And we don't do this and we don't do that. We don't do this, we don't do that. And that's great. (laughs) But that doesn't mean that. You are the virgin that God is looking for. You understand? You have many Christians. We don't wear pants and we don't wear makeup and we don't wear this and we don't wear that. We don't do this and we don't do that. And that's great. But it doesn't mean that you are the virgin that God is looking for. See, in the past, We mostly, most religions, most religious people, we build our faith on a couple of stuff. And we stand on that couple of things. And we think we are the virgin that God is looking for. Because I don't participate in none of the holidays. I'm the virgin that God is looking for. And I'm so sanctified. But you're so nasty. Your mouth is so filthy. You're so whorish. You know what I'm saying? So filthy. You go to those, we don't wear this and we don't wear that and we don't wear that. You're so prideful, arrogant, haughty, stiff neck, and nasty. Bitter, 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 bitter. Just bitter. Can't nobody take a bite off your tree. You're just bitter. You know what I'm saying? But many believe we are the version God is looking for. And the Lord has sent me to say today, I am not looking for this version. I'm not looking for that. He is not choosing those that have found something to to gravitate to and to say, because I do this and it's in the Bible, I'm the chosen one. We're the chosen seed. He's, he's, no, you're not. The Lord says an unjust balance is an abomination. Yeah, you might stand tall for that. And you might stand tall for that right there. And you might stand tall for that right there. 
but you don't care nothing about what I said about this. And you care nothing about what I said about that. What makes you think I'm going to choose you? You see? And because we gravitate to one little thing and think that we are, we, we, we build our, ourselves up, our confidence up, our faith up on just these couple of things that we agree with in the scriptures. Because we don't agree with all the scriptures, just this. And I'm going to build myself up so tall on just these couple of scriptures right here. And I'm just going to build a monument around these couple of scriptures right here. And that's fine. But it doesn't mean that we're going to be chosen. Many were called. Only few were chosen. Few there be that find it. The straight gates. The narrow way. Few. Why just few, Lord? Because most people are busy trying to build up a monument around certain beliefs that they've gravitated to that they think I just love so much because they don't do it and they're missing the whole thing missing it thinking just because you refrain from this and you refrain from that that you just the one that I chose I've learned that every single thing in the word has meaning. I've learned that. I've learned the Lord said nothing for no reason. Everything he said was for a reason. I've learned that. Amen. I've learned that. And when he began to give me the purification, some of the purification, and when he began to show me so many that have chose this part of the word to stand on, and then others they chose that part of the word to stand on. And others choose this to stand on. And because, hey, look at us and we don't do this and we don't do that. We're the chosen ones. Nah, look at us. We don't do this and we don't do that and we don't do this and we don't do that. We're the chosen ones. And then you got everybody saying the same thing. Just because they grabbed a couple things from the scripture they think that they're just, they just doing God a great, great service. We're just doing God a great, great service. Because we don't believe in abortion. We're doing God a great, great service. Because we don't believe in makeup. We're doing God a great, great service. Because we don't believe in pants. We're doing God a great, great service. Because we don't believe in Easter Christmas. We're doing God a great, great service. And he's saying, I'm still looking and searching for the chosen ones. Because so many feel like they're chosen because they chose a couple of things out of the scriptures to stand on. But I'm looking for the one that can receive all of me. Do you know when Esther was chosen? Do you know the king went in to her? He went in. Did you know that? Did you know he went in? Did you know she received all of him? Did you know that? But we think we're chosen. We do. We don't receive all of God. We don't receive all of his word. No. We build monuments to stand on. I stand on this scripture, this scripture, and this scripture. Hey, look at us. You can tell we're different. We're set apart. Yeah, but there's something just undone about you. There's something undone about your attitude. There's something undone about your mindset. There's something undone about your disposition. There's something undone about how you look at other people that you feel like are not on your level. There's something undone about you. But we're God's greatest gifts, right? Oh, God, we're your greatest gifts. Look at us. We're not like the Bararians. We're we're not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Oh, look at us. We're not like them and we're not like them. But look at you, though. Look at me. And the Lord says, I'm looking and I'm searching for me. I'm looking and I'm searching for my better half. I'm looking and I'm searching for my bride. I'm looking and I'm searching for one that is 
giving themselves a reason to believe what I have said instead of a reason to believe, instead of a reason not to believe what I have said. And a lot of times when we look around, there are so many trying to give reasons not to believe. This is my reason not to believe that. Why? Because I'm comfortable where I am on this in this monument that I have built. This monument that I have been passed down. This monument that I have been taught. This monument that I have paid for. And when the Lord comes and says, I'm doing a new thing. We don't, we kind of don't want to hear that. Right? And we have so many that say they have come out. We have so many that say they are sanctified, set apart for the master's use. And when I look out, it's like, Lord, where are the ones that follow on to know you? We're the ones that have the capacity to receive all of you. I'm saying all of you so much until the rivers of living water flows out of the belly. See, we've been playing. And because we've been playing, the Lord gave me a sign to share with you, saints. Esther, which a couple of days ago, I believe that the Lord just had me because this is something that he gave me to do. So I'm like, yes, it's fresh. I like it. I like it. I love it. So we've just been doing these um, readings, reading the scripture, reading books, reading, reading different things. And putting them to music and it's I love it. Amen. And I'm thinking, okay, this is what the Lord just put on my heart to do, but it wasn't just that, Saints. It was the Lord knowing that to to keep walking on this journey that He was gonna bring me back to this point of talking about this. And I had my Bible open, I had pads around it, you know, a notepads around it, I had a another couple of books around it and things like that and I had this you know out and after I had gotten finished at that point I got up went to do something else and I left these things out I left my bible in its same place I left the notepads in its same place the pencils and pens I left everything in its same place well, I get one of the, somebody got a somebody came and I guess wanted the place where my Bible and things were. And there was a band. All right. There was a band laying there as well. Now, the band wasn't mine. The band, like a hair band, you know, like you can put your wear your hair down and put a band around you know, and it, it rests behind the ears. It's a band, right? And so a band was there as well, but it wasn't. I guess it was near my things, but, you know, it wasn't mine. So whoever wanted the place that my stuff was or whatever, they got all the, the notepads that I had. They stacked them up. And some, t- some kind of way... They it had to be one of the kids, maybe some kind of way. They grabbed the band that was there, the headband that was there. They put it on the Bible. Now, the Bible is still open. They put it on the Bible. The Bible is still open to where I was reading it. They put it on the Bible. And then they closed the Bible. Maybe they were trying to mark the place where I was, you know. Um, so they put the van right there on my Bible and then they closed the Bible and then they got all the notebooks and they put that on top of the Bible and they, they put it in a safe place. All right. So I went back later that day and, uh, I grabbed the, I grabbed my Bible and I opened it up. 
And I'm like, what? A bow? Like a bow? A bow? Why would, who in the world would put a bow in my Bible? Right? So I'm like, ugh. Shrug it off like most moms do. Like, ugh. And when I remove this band, this bow, that was a, there is a ring. There is a ring. Because ladies of color, we thrive on hair moisturizer. So whoever was wearing the, the bow or the band, the headband, that was, and, and it's a cloth, it's cloth headband as well. And so, I guess that was moisturizer still or grease, you can say, still in this band. So when they put the band on my Bible to mark my spot, now when you pick it up, you can't tell that it has moisturizer on it. When you pick it up, it's just like, hey, this is a bow, let me wear that. But it to to have it, to put it on paper and deep press it because they closed the Bible on top of it, there was, it, it grabbed the residue of moisturizer, which created a ring in my Bible. But it's only on two pages, right? It's only on two pages. So there's a circle ring, big circle ring in my Bible on two pages. And the two pages that it's on, is on the front and back of this page. And the page that I had it open to was the book of Esther. And this is where the ring is. And it's the ring is around Esther chapter 1, which talks about the royal feast of King Ahasuerus. The ring is around the part where it's talking about the feast. And when I flip the page... The ring pressed through the page, and it, it, it immediately circles around. Queen Vashti refuses the king. Now, I fought with this for... I fought with the idea of a bow, a band, headband, being in my Bible. I fought with that idea for maybe about five minutes going back and forth in my mind like this is just wow who would do this why why would you do that why why would you put a boat in my, why, why would you do that right about five minutes just to myself why would you do that right then i said thank you lord thank you lord lord thank you because this is weird this is odd this has never happened before and so i know that you want me to recognize something so I had to bring myself back down bring my flesh out of the way stop thinking about the bow the other band being placed in my Bible and then my Bible being closed don't think about that don't think about that so I just started thanking the Lord Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you for allowing me to see what it is that you desire for me to see Thank you for allowing me to see what it is you, do, you desire for me to see. And as I prayed that prayer, I was the, I had turned the page and I looked and the circle is circled around Queen Vashti refuses the king. Queen Vashti refuses the king. And I begin to immediately do a heart check, right? I begin to immediately do a heart check. Anytime the Lord gives me a word, I am the first partaker thereof. So I immediately begin to do a heart check. Like, Lord, let me check. And I'm like, okay, Lord, you said cry loud and spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet. I've done that. You told me to say these things. Like, like I'm like, I'm going through my checklist, right? Because... At the end of the day, I got to be right. Even if I talk to folks that don't listen, I still got to be right. So I'm going through this checklist of, Lord, okay, you told me to cry out, but I did. The things you tell me to say, okay, Lord, I say it, I say those. This is a big one. Okay, the things you tell me to say, 
I began to think, am I taking part in the things that I'm telling others that you said don't take part in? Am I doing things that I am preaching, teaching, telling others that you said not to do? Am I doing those things? These are personal checks. This is what we have to do when we're preaching, teaching other people. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones that get, we are the ones that have to pay. We are the ones that have blood on our hands because we misguided, misled people because we didn't want to follow on to know the Lord. Because we found something in the scriptures and we want to, we want to scoop and stoop right there on that little part and just build a whole big tower monument. We are the one that get judged for not falling on to know the Lord. We are the ones that, uh, get judged for being those virgins that while well, everybody was called out, only one had a heart for wisdom. Right? And the only one chosen when the Messiah comes to receive us is going to be the bride of Christ and everybody that's connected. Now, people say they're connected all day long. It doesn't mean that they're connected because she has certain certain attributes, one of them being a contrite spirit. All right? So... The ring that I saw was around Queen Vashti refuses the king. All right. When I flipped the, and this is the first, when I, when the Lord first showed me, this was the thing that I saw. I saw this grease ring. I saw this stain in my Bible, a perfect circle. And then I saw Queen Vashti refuses the king. So I immediately started doing a, a personal check on myself. I immediately started doing a personal check. And then the Lord could begin to speak to me about the body, right? It was on yesterday. Now, this happened maybe two days ago, but it was on yesterday when I flipped back to see that the perfect ring is also on the opposite page, talking about a Hoseris royal feast. And I know when the minute that I brought up feast and feast days, and there are those, you know, Hebrew Israelites and different ones, they believe in a feast day. And they think, oh, we are God's chosen. You know what I'm saying? But just because I'm sharpened in this area, don't you think the Lord wants somebody that's well balanced? See, we 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 count the chickens before they hatch. You don't know if somebody going to go in the yard and step on a couple of eggs or not. We just think we got, let me see, we got, we see five eggs. That's five chickens. Uh, not so much. You don't know if somebody's going to come in the night and take a couple of eggs. You think you got five chickens. You wake up, you got one chicken. So sometimes we feel like because we are poised and sharpened in certain areas that we just the chosen ones and the Lord is saying, we are so mistakenly wrong. He's looking for those that are going to be well-rounded. Amen? Well-rounded. And people don't want to hear that. That's why I love to say it. He's looking for those that are going to be well-rounded. People think just because they have prosperity... That they are just the next thing to God. They so bitter, nasty, resentful, hateful. They hate folks. They're entitled. Yeah, they're entitled. But there are those of us that are going through the purification process. There are those of us that are going to be well-rounded. We don't just say... That ain't for us, and this ain't for us, and that ain't for us. No, we're saying, Lord, what do you want in this time, in this place, in this disposition right now, in the 11th hour? What is it that you desire right now? Because you are the only one that knows what's going on. 
well, we don't used to do that, and we didn't do. We do it like this, and we do it like that, and that, and that is fine. There are those that feel that way. That is fine. Many will be found in their own way. Many will be found in their own way. They'll be found in their own way. Be people think just because they're not in the street partying, hardying, that they're well-rounded. I'm well-rounded, and the Lord is saying. Why would I receive you when you don't receive me? <laughs> Why would I receive you and you don't receive me? Why would I do that? We're going to read real quick. It says where the circle is. And I brought up the circle because when I, and the Lord just showed me last night when I was on YouTube looking at the eclipse, the different videos of the, about the eclipse, because yes, that happened, but now there's there's other little other things that are going on. And I was looking at this video about the eclipse, and I'll probably share that photo where the, it's it's been noted that when they when when looking up in the sky, there was a perfect circle, right? There was a perfect circle. It did not show the moon. It did not show the sun, but it showed a white circle, perfect white circle in the sky where moon and sun was supposed to be. It showed a perfect white circle. And when I saw this and I saw them speaking on this and showing the footage of it, the Lord immediately, and when I was listening to this, he immediately took me back to my, to the scriptures. He immediately took me back to Esther chapter 1. He immediately took me back to this. He immediately took me back to this. Amen. He immediately took me back. And when I went and opened up my Bible, I was just like, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Because what the Lord is saying is America is Queen Vashti. Hmm. That is who America is. America made up in its entirety. America and America's prophets and prophetess. America's pastors, teachers, evangelists. America's uh, uh, handmaidens. America's... Uh, America is Queen Vashti. That's who America is. And Vashti is about to be done away with. You better listen to what I'm telling you. Vashti makes up everybody that refuses the purification process. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. If I'm telling you this, you get yourself ready. Because Vashti makes up everything that goes against the king. Vashti is in her own way. Vashti is how Vashti want to see it. It's what Vashti thinks. If the king says, okay, come on, I want you to do this. Vashti don't feel like, Vashti don't want to. Vashti is, is what she wants. This is what we do. And this is America. Now it came to pass in the day of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India, even into Ethiopia. Over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his provinces and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the of the provinces. Being before him, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace. It says both unto great and small seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. Where were, where were white, green, and blue hangings fasted with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings, 
and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And when they gave them drinking vessels of gold, and when they gave them drinking vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king, and the drinking was according to the law, none did compel. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Verse 10. This is where the ring is. Okay. It says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Zith, Zitha, Harbona, Bigtha, and, Ab- and Abatha, Zethor, Carcass, the servant chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty for she was fair to look upon. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by the, by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. Now, the king was wroth And his anger burned in him. Okay. Many times because we know God is love. We don't really care about the king being wroth. And his anger burning within him. But the thing about it is. We can forget forgiveness and forgiveness and forgiveness for so long. Until we start taking that thing for granted. Right. And once we start taking forgiveness for granted. The Lord says now your time is up. Amen. Amen. Now is the time where I turn you over to a reprobate mind. Now is the time where I turn you over to the delusions of your own flesh. Now is the time where I allow you to color outside the lines and let people see you do it. Now is the time that I uncover your nakedness. Now is the time that your calamity shall come and I will laugh at you. Now is the time. Why? Because there's so many of us, we refuse the king's orders because it's not what we like to do. It's not what we want to do. It's not what we know. It's not what we desire. And it becomes about us. It becomes about us. Just like Vashti, it became about her. Just like America, it's about her. It's about what she wants. It's about what she knows. It's about what she desires. It's about what she says. You know the difference between those that are called and those that are chosen? Those that are called, they know that the king chose them. But like Vashti, after I'm chosen, I don't give a darn what else you got to say. I already got the position. Now it's left up to me to do me. The king gave me the position, and now it's up to me to do me. And this is when we look around, this is who we see. We see people that the king gave positions to. We see people that gave themselves positions. We see all of these things going on in the land. And many of these people feel like they don't need the king. I don't need the king. I don't need no preceding word. I don't need anything he's saying. I've got the position. That's all I need. And a lot of times they go in these positions. They go in their own way. And then in the end, this sad part, when he says, turn, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Now, just like I said, turn, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. People can say, people have been saying that for years. Okay, the Lord is going to say, turn, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. All right. I don't want you to keep doing that because if you do, the Lord is going to say, turn, I never knew you, you work of iniquity. And before you know it, people done heard that same thing for so long until it just becomes music in the background, you know? It just becomes a, a faint me- melody in the background. All right, okay, you keep going your own way. The Lord is going to say, turn, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. 
the Lord is going to say, turn, I never knew you. You work of iniquity. And you can keep saying it for so long like Noah kept saying it for so long. And this is how it sounds to people. Amen. This is how it sounds. Turn, I never knew you, you worker of equity. Turn, I never knew you, you worker of equity. Turn, I never knew you, you worker of equity. Turn, I never This is what the preceding word of the Lord has become to us. 